Ladies and gentlemen, dear members and friends of EGU, we are all very pleased to welcome you all to the 2017 EGU award ceremony. With great pleasure, we especially welcome our medalists and awardees, of course, together with their families, friends, and colleagues. Dear medalists and awardees, we are here today to honor you and your outstanding achievements. For the opening of the ceremony, please welcome with me on stage the EGO president, Jonathan Bamba. Is this working? Yeah, okay, great. Um, I'd like to um, offer a personal welcome to all the awardees, their friends, uh, family, and colleagues. This, um, this event, I think, is perhaps one of the most rewarding, but also most important uh, duties that I have this week. It's rewarding because it's an honor, it really is an honor and a privilege to celebrate your success and your brilliance. And, um, you know, it's something that I, I enjoy um, always when I do this. It's important because you're the stars of your discipline and, or, or soon will be. And you'll act as role models for the next generation of exceptional talent. And I hope that you, you, you take that responsibility seriously and that you, you know, remember us well um, and kindly, and that actually you go out and, and communicate the message about coming to EGU and that you send out the, the right message to, to the next generation of scientists. The other thing I wanted to say is that um, it's important to remember that um, EGU awards these, all of these awards on a single basis, and that is merit. There are no other criteria that we apply. You don't have to be a member of EGU. You don't have to have published in our journals. It's simply that, that you need to be a brilliant scientist and, and brilliant at what you do. And I think we're, we're unusual in that respect, and I, I hope that you appreciate that. And as a consequence, some of you, for some of you, this may be the first meeting, uh, the first EGU meeting that you attended, and if it is, I, I very much hope it is, isn't the last and that we see you again and your students and postdocs. Um, the only other thing I'd like to say is that we've, we've worked quite hard to make this, uh, this ceremony um, enjoyable, um, perhaps a little bit entertaining, but also relatively short. So with that, I will shut up and uh, move on and let someone else uh, say something. Thank you. And please welcome on stage EGU's Vice President, Hans Tübo. Thank you, and uh, welcome to the award ceremony. It's a real privilege for me to stand here on stage and uh, have the, the right to honor our awardees. Uh, I, I feel it like a real privilege. Uh, during this week, uh, I have already been at some of the awardee lectures, and uh, I, I have a take-home message maybe for you who are here, that uh, we have an excellent filter in identifying some of the most outstanding uh, presentations uh, at our uh, General Assembly here. Simply go and listen to the lectures given by the awardees. These are the most outstanding people within their fields, and uh, we, we can uh, conclude that they also spend time on preparing uh, real great lectures where we can actually learn about other subjects than what we are working on uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And, uh, well, welcome to the award ceremony, and uh, as uh, Jonathan said, uh, we have a relatively short uh, uh, award ceremony here, and uh, so thank you for coming. The EGU would like to honor first those students who have successfully taken part in EGU's 2016 OSPP contest. 
Please welcome here on stage together with me the 2016 Outstanding Student Poster and Pico Awardees. Please come on stage. We are now honoring the 2017 division medalists for their outstanding achievements in the various disciplines covered by EGU's divisions. The actual presentation of these medals takes place during the individual medal lectures during the week. Today, we are calling all of you on stage together, representing the unity of geosciences at EGU. Dear division medalists, please come on stage. Please applaud for Barry Parsons, Augustus Love Medal, Hitoshi Kabatkatsu, Beno Gutenberg Medal, Ricardo Lanari, Christian Huygens Medal, Lenny Telly, Fritjof Nansen Medal, Eric Priest, Hannes Alfen Medal, Denis Didier Rousseau, Hans Oeschka Medal. 
Paul Wignell, Jean-Baptiste Lamarck Medal, Dani Orr, Jean Dalt Medal, Tuja Pulkinen, Julius Bartels Medal, Edward Ott, Louis Fry Richardson Medal, Eric Rignot, Louis Agassi Medal, Chris Spies, Louis Nehe Medal, Axel Timmermann, Milutin Milankovic Medal, John Taduno, Petrus Peregrinus Medal, Peter Smith, Philippe de Chiffon Medal, Bruno Merz, Plinius Medal, Ellen Wohl, Ralf Alger Bagnold Medal, Graham Pearson, Robert Wilhelm Bunsen Medal, Augusto Neri, Sergei Solovjev Medal, Case Tashir, Stefan Müller Medal, Isabella Velikonja, Wenning Meines Medal, John Plain, Wilhelm Bjergnes Medal, Chuck Middelburg, Wladimir Ivanovic Bernatsky Medal, Ladies and gentlemen, the EGU Union Service Award is reserved for individuals in recognition of their outstanding efforts in promotion, growth and running of the Union. It is our great pleasure and our honor to welcome on stage the Union Service Awardee Alberto Montanari. Hans Tübo is kindly delivering the citation for Alberto Montanari. Yes, this is a real pleasure. I have been working together with Alberto for many years within the EDU, and uh, it was a real pleasure that the uh, Council agreed fully, unanimous uh, with me and uh, Jonathan Bamper, that Alberto de definitely deserves this uh, award. And, uh, he is uh, receiving the award in recognition of his outstanding services to the EDU awards program, incorporating the highest ethical standards and transparencies in procedures. And uh, then, then I was told I should keep this brief. I got one minute, and uh, I was told that it's a very short citation that we wrote, but uh, having seen it, uh, it I can probably not do that in one minute, so I would recommend you to go to the website and, and read about uh, <laughs> all of uh, Alberto's uh, many achievements for the EDU. 
but uh, I should say that uh, he definitely has uh, uh, revised the whole awards program. He's turned it into a completely transparent, uh, open uh, procedure. He has uh, stressed the importance of gender and also uh, that we should incorporate, uh, we should acknowledge our early career scientists uh, with our awards and many other things. And before that, Alberto also was serving as a president of uh, the hydrology uh, division. He has been an editor for our hydrology um, journal and many other things. And during his uh, term as president of uh, hydrology, he uh, also improved the um, procedures about uh, awards for posters and other things uh, within that division. And besides all of these activities, Alberto is now the head of department in his uh, university, and he is also uh, active still in research, I know, uh, in particular to uh, improve uh, the hydro, uh, our understanding of the hydrological system in, uh, in particular the region where he is coming from in Italy. So I find that uh, Alberto is a, 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 an a obvious recipient of this uh, award. So congratulations, Alberto. Alberto Montanari is presented the 2017 Union Service Award. Well, this is definitely very nice. I am very grateful to EGU, not only for this award, but above all for the support that the union gave to me during the whole course of my career and also during my education. This is amazing if I look back and I see what AGU gave to me. A EGU, sorry. At, uh, <laughs> you know, they are very similar. And <laughs> But also, I, I am also indebted to all the society, but of course we are talking about EGU. And uh, at EGU, I met tens of colleagues, and some of them became my very good, and I, I say again, very good friends. And I would like to mention Gunther Bloschel, Siva Sivapalan, Hubert Savenay, and uh, Dimitris Kutsoyanis, amazing colleagues. I'm very grateful to my colleague at the University of Bologna, Francesca, Elena, Attilio, Alessio and Alessio, Serena, you are really amazing, the best colleagues that one can wish in his career. I'm very grateful to the EGU president and vice president for leading my nomination and for giving a lot of support to me during my service here at EGU. Finally, I would like to deliver a special thought to three colleagues and friends whom I first met at EGU and are not with us anymore. They are Tim Cohn, Arne Richter and Roland Slich. I will never forget their help, support and friendship. Thank you again, EGU. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as one of the four Union Medals, EGU presents the Alexander von Humboldt Medal in recognition of research in developing regions for the benefit of people and society through which they have achieved exceptional international standing in geosciences and in planetary and space sciences. It is my great pleasure to welcome here on stage 
the Alexander von Humboldt medalist Johann Baumer. As you know, EGU is strongly driven by the continuous exchange and interaction between early career scientists and senior scientists. That was the reason um, that we would like to honor them all together. Our union medalists are role models for the younger generation, and we would like to take the opportunity and bring them also together here during this award ceremony. On division level, early career scientists are honored with the so-called EGU Division Outstanding Early Career Scientists Award. I herewith would like to call on stage those Division Outstanding ECS awardees being related to the expertise of the Alexander von Humboldt medalist. Ladies and gentlemen, please applaud for Michaela Dippold, Biogeosciences. Dirk Scherler, Geomorphology. Victoria Arsenegi, Soil System Sciences. Saskia Kestra is kindly delivering the citation for Johann Baumer. Thank you very much, Martin. After a career, impressive career of 51 years, 40 PhD students, and many papers and book chapters, Johann Baumer has shown that he is a great scientist. His research started out with pioneering work on hydro hydrologic pedotransfer functions and smarter sampling schemes that could also be used in less favorable conditions, such as in developing countries. He taught his PhD students from all over the world how to do research and use this knowledge to come to sustainable development. Johan realized that soil science alone is not sufficient to solve problems he encountered, real problems related to societal issues. He reached out to other disciplines to work together, both to other physical scientists and as well as to social scientists, making true interdisciplinary research possible. But all these things were not the reason why I nominated Johan. Johan was part of numerous panels, commissions and task forces. In all these panels, he's always the most tireless advocate for making to show the importance of soil science and helping, helps to bring soil science on the policy agenda making policymakers aware of the role of soil science for sustainable development. Johan's work in, and outreach are clear signs of his bright mind, going beyond science, making science relevant for society. His sessions at EGU show this. This year, one of the sessions called, is called Lighthouse Examples Illustrating Soil Relevance for the Sustainable Development Goals. For me, Johan is a lighthouse. He guides us in our science, making science useful for society, making the connection. And that is why I nominated Johan, and I am very pleased that he has been chosen to be the recipient of the von Humboldt Medal. Congratulations, Johan. Johann Baumer has presented the 2017 Alexander von Humboldt Medal.
Well, thank you very much for this award. I would like to thank the European Geosciences Union for the honor to receive the Alexander von Humboldt Award. And I'd like to thank all my former students and colleagues, both in Wageningen and in various developing countries. And last but not least, I thank my wife and my family. <laughs> you know, the scientific career of Alexander von Humboldt is highly inspiring for scientists operating in the current hectic scientific arena, as you experience right now. As one realizes after reading the impressive biography by Andrea Wolff, written in 2015, he was the first in the early 1800s to emphasize the importance of the interconnected web of life, rather than isolated disciplinary and taxonomic issues, as was the custom at the time, and still is in some quarters. He saw man as part of nature, rather than as its justified and exclusive consumer, the dominant view at the time, and it still is in some quarters. It is now generally accepted that the geosciences are not only closely linked with other environmental sciences, but with society itself. Modern measuring, sensing, and modeling facilities offer now the possibility to express ecosystem dynamics in quantitative terms rather than in terms of the flowery, illustrated books, reports, letters, and drawings by Van Humboldt. But the basic message is the same. But perhaps his greatest contribution has been his enthusiastic and uncompromising dedication to be receptive to new ideas, keep learning, and to maintain an open, inquisitive mind when observing phenomena in nature or when interacting with land users in Latin America and in the United States. He always encouraged young colleagues and shared his data freely. As a scientist, he carried his instruments everywhere, meticulously documenting his many observations to be systematically analyzed and later to be written down at night, at, at using the candles to be able to do it. At the same time, he was in dialogue with poets like Goethe, quite aware of facts, that facts are experienced differently by different people, as it involves personal emotions. Two centuries before terms like inter- and transdisciplinarity were coined, they were acted out in real life by Alexander von Humboldt. As, for example, he observed the misery of farmers in the Aragua Valley in the Andes following erosion and soil degradation as a side effect of cutting upland forests. In general, he warned against developments where science <clears throat> may feed the brain with abstract data while ignoring imagination in the process. If you look for a relevant lesson for the modern scientific arena, here it is, folks. The challenge to you for the, uh, for the future scientists. Thank you very much. We are now awarding the Alfred Wegener Medal and Honorary Membership for exceptional international standing and achievements in atmospheric, hydrological or ocean sciences. It is my great pleasure to welcome on stage the Alfred Wegener Medalist Urugesus Siva Palan, or better known as Siva. On union level, the EGO awards outstanding early career scientists with the Arne Richter Award. I herewith call those on stage whose research subject is related to disciplines the Alfred Wegener Medal stands for. Please welcome the Arne Richter awardees on stage, Federico Bianchi and Yadong Sung.
and those division outstanding early career scientists being related to Alfred Wegener are now asked to come on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, please applaud for Francesco Muschitiello, Climate, Past, Present and Future. Ricarda Winkelmann, Cryospheric Sciences. Anne van Loen, Hydrological Sciences. And Elena Freika Williams, Ocean Sciences. André Prévost is kindly delivering the citation for Federico Bianchi. André, please enter the stage. So, congratulations, Federico. Uh, his research, if you read his, um, his, his uh, award in, in, on the web, is, is mostly about dealing with the uncertainties of the anthropogenic influence on climate change. One important process in there is the nucleation. That's why he was really nominated by Marco Kumola, obviously, because that's his favorite topic. And, you know, some of you know that has been these famous experiments in, at CERN in the cloud chamber that have led to four nature and three science papers, which actually Federico has co-authored. But his exceptional contribution was then really I would think his, his first author publication in science that really bridged the gap between the lab and the ambient air by doing measurements at the Jungfrau. And also, more recently, did also measurements in Nepal. So it's important not just to look in the lab, understanding processes, to make sure it's really the thing also that you see in the atmosphere. I think what really makes, it dif makes him different to other people is, is his enthusiasm for a lot of things. I mean, he convinced his bosses to do these crazy experiments in the mountains. He loves the mountains and <clears throat> keeps him also fit. So actually, he's really damn good also in ba playing basketball. I played always basketball against him and he, I always lost, you know. And I was only lucky when I played with him actually at the time. And also very good in partying and so on. Okay, we go, don't go into that. But I think, yeah, you should keep doing that, keep doing the excellent science, but also keep doing a little bit of the crazy things on the side. So congrats again, Federico, for this award. Federico Bianchi is presented the 2017 Arne Richter Outstanding Early Career Scientists Award. So, thank you very much. I really like to thank Iju. As the president said before, some people come here for the, for the first time for the award. That's my case. But I promise I will be back. Uh, then I will be a bit Italian in my reply. So, I must thank my mama. But of course, the father and the sister too, they are great. And uh, what are, I would like to thank my country again, so Italy, because it gave the opportunity to me to grow in Italy and then uh, let me explore Switzerland, Finland, and, uh, and so on. But uh, a final thing, it's a bit weird maybe, but I would like to thank Europe. Europe as it is now is amazing. You can, it's kind of almost one only country, even beside all the problems that are happening now. And the mobility in Europe is just perfect. I mean, I don't know how it would have been our career 20 years ago, maybe you know actually, but <laughs> where mobility is much more complicated. So yeah, that, that's my thanks. Ah, maybe I should also thank my PhD advisor, Urs Batisberger. 
and Marco Kulmula. Andre, thanks for uh, the basketball too. Thank you. David Bond is kindly delivering the citation for Yadong Soon. David, please enter the stage. Okay, I uh, completely agree. Europe is fantastic, and let's hope it remains that way. Um, so Yadong sometimes plays badminton with me, but fortunately he always lets me win, which is very nice of him. That's a mark of the, the kind of person he is. Uh, Yodong's made an outstanding contribution to our understanding of paleoclimates uh, during some of the greatest mass extinction events in Earth history. Yodong's love and appreciation for the humble conodont fossil, of which he's becoming heartily tired, uh, began during his studies in Wuhan, in China, um, during which his research defined the Middle Permian extinction level in South China. And this led to his first paper in science just a year into his PhD. Since then, Yodong has pioneered innovative oxygen isotope work on single conodont elements, a breakthrough in our science that led to his second science paper in 2012. Uh, this provided the first detailed record of ocean temperatures through the latest Permian extinction and the early Triassic biotic crises. Whilst the high demand for his expertise comes from respect for his scientific ability, Yodong maintains his collaborations through respect for his knowledge and integrity. I and everyone who's ever worked with Yudong have been entirely impressed by all aspects of his research, but mostly by his humble nature. He really is a great person to work with. Uh, Yudong exemplifies all of the qualities recognized by this award, and I'm really delighted that his contribution to paleontology and geosciences more widely has been recognized today. Thanks. Yadong Soon is presented the 2017 Arne Richter Outstanding Early Career Scientists Award. Thank you. Thank you, Dave, for confirming that I'm so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I have been suspecting this for quite a while, maybe since I was Kate. Uh, I, I came to Europe eight years back uh, as a really shy boy. In the past eight years, I worked with many colleagues in Europe, and uh, I have been taking German taxpayer money for my salary in the past to three years and part of my Humboldt Fellowship. I feel great responsibility to contribute to this community in Europe. So I will dedicate myself in future to uh, build up bridges from China to Europe, maybe to US, and uh, hopefully make science become more borderless. Thank you. Michael Rodrik is kindly delivering the citation for Mukugesu Siva Palan. Michael, please enter the stage. So I first met Siva in 1993. I can remember at the University of Western Australia going to meet him in his office about something. We didn't actually talk about what we were supposed to be talking about. He was showing me the, the first catchment model that he'd developed and I couldn't remember the name of it but in his talk today I discovered it was LASCAM, right? LASCAM. He was working on a catchment that had a lot of data and he could reproduce all of it and it was really astonishing. And to a young... So and I, I also found out this morning that this was 1993. Siva had turned up in Western Australia in 1988 and he still hadn't published a paper, which I don't think would cut it today. <laughs> to a scientist working like that, he'd really hit the honeypot. So the idea would be you get the model, 
you move it to the next catchment, apply for a grant, on you go. We had him, I ran into him about three months later and he was actually really quite despondent about the whole thing. And I asked him what was going down and he said, uh, it didn't work. Okay, fair enough, I thought. He's a very, very skillful engineer. I figured he'd sort it out sooner or later. So I ran into him again about six months later and he was really upbeat, really excited about the science, so I would thought that he'd actually worked out what was wrong and he'd fixed it. But actually, when we got to talking, he said, I realised that what I'd been doing was really deeply flawed, which is kind of interesting. And uh, And I said, why is it deeply flawed? And he said, it's something to do with scaling. This would have been in about 1994, I think, or 1995. And if you look in the literature, about two years later, there was a whole avalanche of papers with his name on it about scaling. But that's not really the issue I wanted to talk about. What I wanted to say is, it's kind of interesting. So when he was working in the catchment, he was a very skilled engineer. And he was asking questions that really mattered to people. But when he identified this deep flaw in what he was doing, he was actually excited about it. And that led to this whole thing. And if you look, I saw it today very clearly in his talk, that, that type of thing has happened throughout his career. So really, Siva is a world-class engineer who asks really important questions, but he's also a world-class scientist when he investigates them, and for me, that's why he's worthy of this medal. So congratulations, Siva. Murugesu Siva Palan is presented the 2017 Alfred Wegener Medal and Honorary Membership. Thank you, Mike, for that nice citation. And you seem to remember a lot of things that I, ha I have now forgotten from back 1993. I, um, I want to first thank my family, my students, and colleagues for their love, generosity, and friendship. I feel blessed to have had this kind of support and the freedom to pursue my career and science goals over the years. Now, if any of you came to the medal ceremony, medal, uh, sorry, the medal lecture early this afternoon, you will have noticed the top three names that I listed had, had long Sri Lankan names. Well, they were actually my high school teachers back home in Sri Lanka and provided the intellectual foundation, discipline, and motivation that fueled my later successes. All three have passed away by now, of course, but I want to use this opportunity to remember them and pay tributes. It's not always that high school teachers are remembered and acknowledged at an international ceremony like this. Another reason that I decided to do this is because I feel like my life is an open book. Fourteen years ago, I received the um, John Dalton Medal from EGU, and I poured my heart out, heart out and gave an acceptance speech, which is now online. 
So I do not want to repeat my life story one more time, and instead focused on, decided to focus on my high school, three high school teachers. The high school I studied is called Hartley College and lies at the northern tip of Sri Lanka. This is a very celebrated school, and it celebrated its 175th anniversary a few years ago. It's an old school. During my time, and even now, I should say, it is a highly selective school. In 1965, for example, for five open positions that they had in grade eight that I entered, there were over 150 applications. And I had to do a written exam, followed by an oral exam. I was lucky to be among the five they selected. In 1969, when I completed year 12 exams, which are university entrance exams and, and highly competitive in Sri Lanka, um, um, the students from my school were so successful that 15 of the 150 top new entrants to the top uh, engineering school in the country were from my school. So this, is, this record is because of the caliber of teachers that we had. So the first one, Mr. Puranam Pillai, was a long time principal of the school and set and maintained standards of academic and all-round excellence and also discipline for over 25 years. Mr. Radha Sapapati was a mathematics teacher as well as later principal who set a standard of mathematics mathematics teaching at high school, which was superior to even what was being taught at, in, at, at the first year level at the university. In less than two years, he turned me around in mathematics from the worst student in the class to the best student. Mr. Manuel Pillay was, did the same for English. I went to high school from a local village schools, in, and in a matter of two years, not only, he not only significantly advanced my English standard, but promoted a culture in me of self-improvement through voracious reading. I want to finish my um, response with an anecdote. When I was a graduate student at Princeton University, I took a fluid mechanics class with Professor Bill Gray. The class assessment included homework assi assignments, midterm exam, and a final exam. At the end of it all, Professor Gray returned the sub all the submitted work with this remark that I still have. Siva, the way you answer questions is superior to anyone I have ever taught in my career. Now, I attribute that compliment to, the, to my mathematics teacher, Mr. Radha Sabhavadi, and my English teacher, Mr. Manuel Pillay. Thank you very much. We are now awarding the Arthur Holmes Medal and Honorary Membership for exceptional international standing and achievements in solid earth geosciences. It is my great pleasure to welcome on stage the Arthur Holmes Medalist Jean-Pierre Brun. And 
hand, please welcome on stage the Arne Richter Awardee for Outstanding Early Career Scientists, Joao Duarte. And related to the Arthur Holmes Medal, I'm now calling the EGU Division Outstanding Early Career Scientists Awards awardees on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, please applaud for Marie Violet, Earth Magnetism and Rock Physics, Nicolas Flamand, Geodynamics, Pierre Lanary, Geochemistry, Mineralogy, Petrology and Volcanology. James Daniel, Natural Hazards, and Elmar Rugrock, Seismology. Felipe Rosas is kindly delivering the citation for Joao Duarte. Felipe, please come on stage. Thank you. Uh, one minute to talk about Joao. That's really challenging. Well, I just want to say that in my own behalf and on the behalf of the other proponents that are sitting in the audience, Pedro Terrinha, Walter Scheller and Mark andre Gutscher, it gives me great pleasure to present to you this recipient of the Arne Richard Award, João Duarte. João did his PhD in the University of Lisbon with myself and Pedro Terrinha, uh, giving a truly outstanding contribution to the unraveling of the tectonics of a critical segment of the Eurasian Nubia plate boundary offshore southwest Iberia. He then moved to Australia to do his postdoc with Walter Scheller in Monash University, that's in Melbourne. And uh, he uh, there developed purely dynamic analog models of subduction. Uh, namely, he was the first one to develop the first of these analog models that uh, comprehend or that include an overreading plate. Uh, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, an inquisitive, restless mind, a hard working, creative scientist, a prolific, kind, generous, co generous colleague, that's Ron Duarte. And Joao Duarte is presented the Arne Richter Outstanding Early Career Scientists Award. So uh, I think I have one minute as well. So first of all, I would like to thank EGU and uh, here in the person of the president and president and vice president. Um, I would also like to thank my early career 
scientist colleagues, because this is always a little bit tricky when you receive an award, because I can see a lot of colleagues that could receive a similar award. We are many, and we are very good. We are a very good generation, so I would also like to thank them. So, I also would like to thank uh, my supervisors, Philip and Pedro, for believing in me when I was still a very young and experienced scientist. And uh, it was, you really made a difference, and you were really nice people, and I always like to work with people that I like. I like to work with friends. That's a priority for me. I also would like to thank Suzanne Witter and my colleagues at EGU because uh, Suzanne helped me you know, travel and through this great world. It was chaotic in the beginning and now I start to understand it a little bit better and that's really, really important that we understand where we are. And finally, I would like to thank, of course, my family and my lovely wife that is there today. Thank you very much. So this would have been impossible without you, of course. So thank you very much and thank you to you all. Laurent Jolivet is kindly delivering the citation for Jean-Pierre Braun. Laurent, please enter the stage. Well, it's very difficult to summarize in two minutes a fair account of your scientific career, my dear Jean-Pierre. And I will focus only on a few points that are the most important in my vision. So I still remember more than 30 years ago, as yes, time goes by, uh, when I had just been appointed an assistant in Paris, I met a young professor in a nearby Paris 7 university who introduced me to the wonders of uh, analog modeling. You had just published a paper on extensional tectonics that was seminal to many, many further studies around the world. You had modeled the extension of a brittle ductile crust with the now famous sand silicon experiments that are widely used in so many labs. This paper of yours and many others with your students and colleagues had a profound influence on our understanding of extensional tectonics and ductile brittle coupling. You are an excellent modeler probably because you are first an excellent field geologist. And as such, you have a natural sense of kinematics and large-scale lithospheric mechanics. As a field geologist, you are among the best to extract first-order information and questions from the mess provided by natural outcrops and landscapes. The models you have produced through the years are always simple and elegant, and they provide simple tests for those who go in the field after you. From the Variscan Belt to the Aegean region, or Tibet and the Basin and Range, you explored a number of exciting areas, and you addressed more major geodynamic questions throughout your career, always coming out with original visions that were often, uh, often adopted by many of us. Extensional tectonics, exhumation of deep crustal materials, soil tectonics, continental lithosphere rheology are among the topics where you had a leading role. But you are also a generous person and you have devoted a large part of your time to your colleagues and students through many collaborations, including the industry. You are an excellent teacher, a characteristic that is not always associated to excellent research. You assume important editorial and administrative responsibilities, working for your community, for the French Geological Society, for Rennes University, for the CNRS. You are a PI of international projects such as the ECOS decor profile across the Rhine Graben because you were at the source of many concepts that we all use today, because you have influenced many of us in our practice of research and our understanding of lithospheric deformation, because of your devotion to the Earth Science community, the Arthur Holmes Medal is well deserved, and your name nicely completes the prestigious list of previous recipients. Congratulations, Jean-Pierre. is presented the Arthur Holmes Medal and Honorary Membership.
The first thing I would like to say is that I find very impressive to hear so good words about myself. I have difficulty to believe to it. It's difficult to think something about myself like the others seems to think. Um, the second thing is just making a bit of history. I arrived as a student in the earth science in 1970 and it was just after the big emergence of plate tectonics. So everything was finished. One of the biggest discovery of the 20th century was done. Too late. <laughs> Too late. And um, of course the history after this made me discovering slowly that it was possible to still do something. And um, finally, when I hear things that Laurent was saying, um, I realized that when I was doing this, I was not considering that this was important, that this could help the others. It was just fun for, with the student with my colleagues to, to go somewhere in the field to, to work with some geophysicist or to do some experiments. And it was just enjoying doing science. And by chance, apparently, some of these things have been useful to the others. And it's a great pleasure to hear that. Um, so during um, four decades, it's quite the time, um, I had been, I have been uh, slalowing between geology and geophysics and uh, trying to bring some pieces of what we call today the mechanics of the lithosphere, the lithosphere, the plates. The plates are not just the plate, they are complicated, they depend very much on their thermal history and, and then the behavior of the rocks can be very soft or very hard and so on and it's very exciting to try to understand how this work how the mountain belt are made to go in the field high in tibet in the himalayas or diving in the ocean at 3000 meters or whatever using the satellite data using working with the seismologists and trying to find images uh some hundred kilometers below our feet, and so on and so on. All, all that to understand how the plate on which we are sitting uh, behave. And um, finally, doing that during four decades is an enormous privilege when we look at the rest of the society and the difficult life that the number of people has, um, we have a big chance of choosing the subject on which we want to work. And if we can find the money to do the experiment we want to do, we make them. It is an incredible privilege. And I would like to thank all the institutions, the universities, the the research institutes and so on to which I depended during these four decades. I would like to thank them enormously to, to offer me this privilege to do this, this work. And this is a privilege and, and then at the end of that, being awarded the Hart Holmes Medal is something incredible. And when I heard that I get it, I believe during 10 minutes that it was a joke, a bad joke, of course. But, but then I received the official uh, email from the EGU, and it was true. And I was totally astonished. And so I want to thank the EGU very much for all the years, uh, EUG, EGS, and then EGU, all the years uh, where we have been, I have been with the student and my colleagues presenting some of these small, small results. And, 
And this has been a great, great experience in the frame of EGU. And I wish to all the young people here to have the benefit of something similar. And I would like to thank also very much Marivonne, who is in the room. We are now awarding the Jean-Dominique Cassini Medal and Honorary Membership for exceptional international standing and achievements in planetary and solar system sciences. It is my great pleasure to welcome on stage the Jean-Dominique Cassini Medalist 2017, Luciano Iessa. And please welcome with me on stage the corresponding Arne Richter Outstanding Early Career Scientist Awardee, Julia Thalmann. And I am now calling the related Division Outstanding Early Career Scientists awardees on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, please applaud for Xin Xin Li, Geodesy, Fabio Tosti, Geosciences Instrumentation and Data Systems, and Cedric Gilman, Planetary and Solar System Sciences. Manuela Temmer is kindly delivering the citation for Julia Thalmann. Manuela, please come on stage. So I'm uh, very happy to uh, give this citation to my colleague uh, Julia Thalmann, who is working at the Sol and Heliospheric Physics uh, Research Group at the University of Graz in Austria. Uh, the fact that I'm standing here and give this citation now means that Julia did a lot of things right in her early career. This uh, covers, of course, uh, excellent research, and I think everybody of you knows how to handle ADS, so I don't want to go uh, into details here, so please check out ADS yourself and have a look at her impact. Um, based on this um, scientific performance, she could really leave an impression uh, at the Arne Richter Award Committee and uh, to give her this uh, distinction. And uh, I have spoken to many uh, colleagues actually here at the conference and uh, got a positive uh, feedback that fully supports this decision. And uh, this actually also acknowledges uh, Julia's uh, outstanding achievements uh, within and for 
our solar and heliospheric physics community, as well as for the solar terrestrial division. In uh, this respect, uh, so uh, leaving impression at the work committee and uh, at the colleagues within the community, I do hope and I wish that uh, she could uh, impress in an equal way also the ERC starting grant uh, committee. She will have an interview in uh, July. And uh, yeah, I do wish her all the best for this interview and uh, congrats from me again. <clears throat> Julia Thalmann is presented the 2017 Arne Richter Outstanding Early Career Scientists Award. I feel very honored um, being here today and being awarded as one of the um, early career um, outstanding scientists this year. I'm especially humbled to being allowed uh, to represent the strong and important um, community of female young scientists, which always deserve a special mention, I guess. Of course, I wouldn't be... Oh, okay. <laughs> of course, I wouldn't be here with the support of many others um, including former and current um, fellow scientists, collaborators, um, host institutions and agencies which funded my past and current research and will do so hopefully in the future. Thanks for the advertisement for the ERC committee. And yeah, I want also to thank my friends, my family and my rabbit for their unquestionable support. Without them, I wouldn't be here today and my life would not be the same. And I also want to thank the EGU for making my day by uh, awarding me with today. Thank you. Scott Bolton is kindly delivering the citation for Luciano Yesa. Scott, please enter the stage. So um, I've had the great privilege uh, of being able to work alongside Luciano for many years and getting to know him. And I've been impressed by a lot of different factors uh, in watching him work and seeing the incredible accomplishments. Um, Luciano thinks of himself as an engineer and he has the training and the background and is in the uh, engineering department, but he's an incredible scientist as well. And, you know, engineers and scientists sometimes approach problems from a different perspective. Uh, they go to solve it differently. And there's an incredible benefit to being able to look at it from those two angles. And I think that Luciano represents an example of how that benefit really manifests itself and can allow uh, nothing less than greatness and innovation that otherwise might not be possible at all. And so Luciano has been involved in many, many uh, missions. Um, I've had the privilege of working with him on both the uh, NASA and ESA mission uh, Cassini, which is in orbit now around Saturn, and on Juno, uh, which is in orbit around Jupiter. Um, but he's also worked on uh, previous missions like Ulysses, um, he's paving the way for the future, uh, allowing uh, missions such as Bepi Colombo and JUICE to do it. His science is based on the radio signal from a spacecraft in order to understand the interior. And that allows us the interior of these solar system bodies, which tells us something about the formation, the structure, the very most fundamental things about how nature works. And what's impressed me maybe uh, a lot with Luciano is that he grasped the idea of the hard work and the analytical thought, but also goes after it from a creative perspective. And that allows the innovation to happen. 
And so he's taken science that otherwise might not be possible, such as understanding the interiors of Titan and the icy moons of Saturn and Enceladus, um, opening up a field of ocean worlds, realizing that there were oceans there, but at the same time, I'm watching him look at the Juno data and basically revolutionizing and opening our ideas of how that might tell us something about Jupiter. Um, and among all of these kinds of unique properties and, and um, uh, in Luciano's personality and his abilities, the thing that it probably impresses me the most is that at the very highest priority in his life is family. And I can't tell you how many conversations I've had with him, and he probably doesn't even remember telling them to me, where he'll tell me about his kids and his children or his wife and the vacations that they'll have taken. And um, I think that maybe among all the different things, when you mix them together, he really represents the role model that we all want to follow. Keep your family important, work really hard, and bring in the new talent and pave the way for the young people, which I think is embodied by this entire award ceremony. So I think you are maybe one of the most fitting people I've ever seen to get uh, this Cassini Award. So my congratulations and my thanks to you, Luciano. Luciano Iesa is presented the 2017 Jean-Dominique Cassini Medal and Honorary Membership. Thank you, Scott. Uh, you must know that Scott is my boss on Juno, and uh, he keeps always an eye on me and see whether I'm well behaved. <laughs> okay, so thank you, <laughs> thank you. So indeed, it was uh, a surprise, uh, undeniably, to receive uh, this award because I am a professor of aerospace engineering. Uh, so. I'm glad to see that the EGU, there is another engineer today who received an award. So this tells us that uh, the boundary between science and engineering uh, is uh, not uh, so well defined. So as uh, Scott was saying, uh, Cassini for me will mean this medal, of course, and thank to the EGU for this, uh, but also to another Cassini, which is flying uh, uh, around Saturn, which is named after the Cassini uh, of the medal. So my entire scientific career is tied uh, to this mission. And uh, I envy um, Earth geophysicists, uh, because it's tough. Uh, they are, uh, the Earth uh, is everywhere. We can experience everything. I thought, uh, many things, uh, it's difficult to find new things on the Earth, but uh, you go on Saturn, wherever you look, uh, there is something new. So making discoveries, uh, in this is, is very easy. And uh, Cassini will, uh, has crossed uh, the rings uh, of Saturn, flying at a very low altitude above the clouds of Saturn between the rings and the planet, uh, this morning. So it's the first of the so-called grand finale orbits, we don't know whether it survived. We will know tomorrow morning at about uh, 9 a.m. But uh, everything happened uh, this morning. So fingers crossed for me. I'm a little bit anxious. Cassini will dive into Saturn uh, in September. It will be a very emotional moment. But uh, we have other missions. Juno, for example. Juno is doing uh, fantastic measurements at, uh, around Jupiter. So. My task is to provide numbers for the gravity field of uh, Jupiter for interpretation and the results uh, that we got uh, so far uh, just uh, 
one orbit essentially, one gravity orbits are already fantastic. So I look forward to this, and also is a time to uh, say uh, a few thanks to, let us start with the space agencies. Space missions are expensive, and uh, I have to thank the Italian Space Agency, the European Space Agency, and NASA for these fantastic missions, uh, and uh, also for funding my group, of course. Uh, I need to thank uh, my young uh, postdocs uh, and graduate students. Uh, some of them are here in the room. Uh, it's a long time that I don't write uh, a single line of uh, a Fortran code. Fortran is something uh, which uh, belongs uh, to the past, but it's the only language which I can really master. They do it. Uh, and. Uh, like uh, an orchestra, a good orchestra, the conductor uh, is not so essential. They can work alone. So it's a pleasure uh, to uh, have the opportunity to work with them. And uh, all these discoveries uh, would not have been possible without, uh, without them. Also, my thesis advisor, Bruno Bertotti, who, from the University of Pavia in Italy, who is a great scientist. I started working on gravitational waves. Gravitational wave detection with the Doppler uh, methods uh, from spacecraft. Uh, then uh, we did together the test of general relativity with Cassini, and uh, now uh, is, I must thank him uh, for introducing me also to geophysics. geophysics. Uh, he's a great scientist uh, with broad interest. Uh, and, uh, and uh, I received this honor also because of him. And of course, uh, finally, my family is very important, as Scott uh, said. It's important especially for the patients uh, that uh, my wife, who is here, and uh, my son uh, had, uh, had for me uh, the lot of time that I had to devote uh, to travel, uh, to meetings, uh, to teleconferences, unfortunately, taking place uh, late in the night. Uh, thank you very much, and thank to you all. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you very much for your attention tonight and we also would like to take once again the opportunity to congratulate all our medalists and awardees. And now, before the reception starts, the EGU President Jonathan Bamba will kindly close this ceremony. Well, um, you know, I, I hope it lived up to its expectations of being um, interesting, reasonably entertaining and not too long. Um, I, won't, I, won't, I won't lengthen it any further and I'd just like to thank you for coming. Um, I think uh, we, we're gonna, the awardees are gonna have um, um, an enjoyable evening later on and there will be some wine and uh, I think some nibbles outside for you to um, mingle afterwards. Um, and I would just like to take this opportunity to close the session and thank you all for being here.